Hey, what is going on, guys? Rules for Rebels here with episode 32 of Side Hustle Thursdays. I think some of you guys are really going to like today's episode if you like a bit of kink. Today's side hustle is selling sex toys and bondage items, but with a little bit of a more interesting twist. So, uh, kind of funny, a couple months back, or a year ago actually, I was thinking actually about dabbling in this niche myself. Uh, I ordered a few items off AliExpress to check quality, of course, not to use. Um, and also to take a few pictures to potentially throw up some listings. Now, the whole sex toy and bondage niche is an interesting one. The products actually sell really well. The margins are insanely good. Uh, there's a lot of AliExpress items that you can buy from, you know, under a buck to maybe $2, $3, $5 at the most, and that you can turn around and sell for $15, $20, even $60. So the margins really are insane. Uh, on a complete side note, some of you guys may or may not be aware that eBay actually has an adult or a mature section that does millions and upon millions upon millions of dollars per week in sales, selling everything from sex toys to sex dolls to porno videos to pictures. A lot of people don't even know it exists, but it definitely is big business. And that said, not every adult item needs to fall into the adult category, which is kind of a hidden one on eBay that a lot of people may not even know exists. Uh, some of the items which are a bit more tame can be listed on the regular eBay and even Amazon, things like a Hitachi Magic Wand or, um, you know, like under the bed restraints. Like those things are, are tame enough that you can actually sell those on a normal eBay and Amazon platform. Uh, and while one could probably start a successful business just selling sex toys and adult items, today's hustler went about it in a little bit more of an outside-the-box way and a more creative way. Uh, so let's get into it, and I'll tell you guys all about it. So Ann Moyer is a chemical engineer for a Fortune 500 company. One day her husband noticed the popularity of the Fifty Shades of Grey books and movies and thought, you know, you could probably start a business and play off the popularity of this trend. And he was actually kind of the one who, who took the bull by the horns and really started the business. He formed the LLC. He started visiting trade shows. Uh, and Anne jokes that she kind of did a hostile takeover and took the business away from him. Um, and she kind of started running with it. So Anne and her husband started a business called Novel Erotics. It's for couples who are uh, looking to try something new and spice up their sex lives, sex lives or their love lives. Uh, she and her husband had an idea a bit more clever than just selling sex toys, though. They actually created a novel, or I guess better yet, a short story. Uh, the cool part was the book. The book was also a case that actually held adult toys that would complement and go along with the story. So the stories as well as the product contain kits that range from like PG to like triple X, uh, everything from bondage tape to blindfolds to rope to lube, depending on which kit you bought. Now the kits have different themes and for a lack of a better word, different levels of, I guess, risqueness. Um, the packaging is what really sets this product apart though and makes it really unique. So what the packaging is, it actually looks like an actual book and it stores discreetly on a shelf. So, you know, it, you can kind of hide your stuff away with people just thinking it's a normal book. <clears throat> It also plays with the theme that you're getting a story along with the products because, you know, these products are coming in this fake, you know, bookcase. And then there's also a story that kind of goes along with the items that you get. So together, Anne and her husband came up with stories as well as the products for each story or each kit. They ordered their products from China as not to try to reinvent the wheel instead of like trying to create from scratch all their own products. They basically just bought generic unlabeled products that were already out there. You know, instead of coming up with their own bondage rope, okay, there's already a hundred sellers on Ali, Alibaba selling bondage rope. We'll just buy theirs. Instead of coming up with like a mask or nipple tassels or whatever, they're just buying existing things that are on the market. It's not as if they're customizing every product just for themselves. So really, if you, if you break it down, all Anne and her husband are really doing, like you could go on to AliExpress, find five different items, you know, maybe one be like a, a whip or something like that. Maybe another one would be ropes under the bed restraints, etc. You write a little short story that kind of features each of these items in there. You get a decorative box to put the story and the items into. And, you know, voila, you're off to the races. And even though you're using kind of unbranded generic products already available on AliExpress, Alibaba, etc. Because you're putting them together as a package, like we call bundling, right? We talk a lot about bundling. Because you're bundling them and because you're kind of creating a story and creating some nice packaging around them, all of a sudden you have a new product with no competition. So I thought that was kind of really cool and really clever. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, take a look around AliExpress or Alibaba. You can see everything that they have to offer. So as I said, Anne used Alibaba, a site that we talk about a lot on this channel. Anne had some experience in sourcing through her job, so that kind of helped her with vetting suppliers and finding the best ones. Uh, she also had a bit of experience with negotiating with suppliers. She also found a few suppliers in the USA as well as in China, and she vetted the Alibaba suppliers by checking how long they'd be, been in business, looking at any gold star ratings, third-party factory visits, any, any 
anything that kind of showed that they were a good seller. And she also placed some test orders to check the quality of items. And for the USA suppliers, a couple of them, she actually went and physically visited their facilities uh, at first to kind of assemble all these items and used a packaging company to assemble the kits for her. Um, however, she eventually started doing it herself and just rented a, a you know a storage unit or a storage garage and did it over there. It helped her kind of have more control over her business and the quality control of the kits, and it also helped her to keep her costs down since she wasn't paying like a fulfillment company to assemble and ship these out for her. So the business has actually been very successful to date. They've sold over 1,500 kits at an average price of $49 per kit. So they're making a pretty good buck for a side hustle, and Anne says she expects this to increase as they bring on more distributors. So one disappointment along the way, surprisingly, came from one of Anne's USA suppliers, not a Chinese manufacturer, which is often where we hear about gaps in communication or poor quality. Uh, but Anne kind of admits that she maybe didn't vet them enough and kind of let her guard down because they were local. And essentially what happened, she kind of planned on using this one particular supplier. And as things were kind of ramping up, they just kind of disappeared in the middle of the process and stopped re responding to calls and emails. So as far as their business model, while they do sell on Amazon, they really focus on more selling wholesale to distributors. Uh, we all know how challenging SEO can be, and Anne and her husband quickly realized that there's a lot of very, very big companies in the adult industry, uh, such as like Adam and Eve and others, and people with a lot more money and bigger pockets than theirs, so they really weren't able to make a mark in search ranking. I guess search ranking for adult items is a really competitive area. So rather than trying to compete with all these companies way larger than them, uh, by selling to distributors and other stores and companies who already have an SEO ranking or, um, you know, just already have more of a presence in the marketplace, uh, those people can sell Anne's products for her. And it's actually good for Anne and her, her husband and their brand as well because it helps grow their brand recognition. So as far as challenges or mistakes, Anne says one mistake she made early on was ordering too much inventory up front. She, <coughs> she kind of wishes she would have started smaller and started uh, slower and with lower quantities and maybe put more of a focus on marketing. Um, another challenge that Anne and her husband ran into with their kits is gated categories, something that you and I run into a lot on, on Amazon as well. So some of Anne's products are PG and would be allowed on Amazon. Uh, others may not, but most of the products fall into the category of health and personal care which, as we know, is a gated category and one of the more difficult categories to get it ungated. And to date, Anne, Anne has not been able to get approved. So for now, she relies on other sellers who are already approved in that category to sell for her on Amazon. One nice thing about Anne's business is that while it's sort of taking advantage of a fad, it's also an evergreen niche. People have always and will always be having sex. And while the whole Fifty Shades of Grey and bondage thing is probably hotter or most pop more popular now than it's been in the past... It's always going to be a hot niche. It's what we call an evergreen niche. So a couple things to note about this business, just kind of from my perspective, be cautious about fad or trend marketing. The thing about fads is that, well, you can make a ton of money if you get in early. They tend to end quickly. Uh, so you really got to get in there early and really hustle. I think Anne's business is a bit of an exception since she's not really playing that hard off the whole Fifty Shades of Grey thing. And also because her product is so unique and because, you know, sex as a whole is an evergreen niche, uh, people will always be having it. So while Anne's site does display over 50 references to Fifty Shades of Grey and Bondage, she hasn't really built her entire brand on that. Another really kind of cool thing is how unique Anne's packaging is and the concept of her product. Uh, one reason why the product is so cool is because it's a gift product. Uh, even people who may not buy this for themselves may buy it for a friend for a bachelorette party or something along those lines. And with gift-type products, the display and the packaging is critical, and Anne's business really hit the nail on the head with that. Um, like I said, you know, there's a story to go along with the items, and it's all packaged in what a case that looks like a book that can be discreetly stored on a shelf. So that's kind of neat, but, you know, it, it's definitely got that uh, gift-type uh, product appeal. So one last thing I'd like to add, this type of business isn't for the faint of heart. I know we talk about selling products and creating products as a side hustle, and while it can be that, if you're really serious about starting your own product line, make sure that you plan on being in it for the long haul and don't expect success, success overnight. I would say you need to be willing to dedicate a few months, if not even a full year, before you're ready to call it quits. Uh, if you're not seeing success, as this type of business can take a while to get up and running, and it can be expensive as well. So if that's not something you're up for, there's nothing wrong with that, but you may want to consider doing affiliate marketing or drop shipping or freelancing or some other type of side hustle, you know, if you don't have the stomach for, you know, maybe having to, to work for three months, six months, or even a year without really even seeing results. Um, 
Anyhow, guys, uh, I really enjoyed today's story. I hope you guys did too. Uh, it's a creative business and something kind of outside of the box. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you were inspired. And until next time, this is Rules for Rebels and Side Hustle Thursdays, signing off.